During this demonstration, we will learn about and apply uh, some of the JMeter functions like log, time, counter, thread num, UUID, property, and instance ID. We will do this by creating a standard test in JMeter that uses each of these uh, functions. Let's start by saving the test plan first. And I'm going to save it off as JMeter lab 1-6 hyphen functions dot jmx all right with that done let's go ahead and add a thread group to this test plan and leave the settings at default let's add uh, two dummy samplers to this thread group i'm going to call the first one as sampler one And then I'm going to go ahead and add one more by just duplicating this. And this time I'm going to call it sampler2. I'm going to leave the settings at default. With that done, let's go ahead and add a listener into this thread group. And the listener that I've added is view results tree. And I'm going to save the test and I'm going to go ahead and run it. And I want you to notice that the, the response uh, of or the result of the two samplers and I want you to take a note of the load time and the connect time. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the log function into this test case. So I'm going to go back and reconfigure sampler1 as sampler1 followed by a log function which is going to look something like this. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to sampler2 and append the log function to it. Leave the rest of the settings to default and I'm going to go ahead and save the test. Go back to my results tree and rerun the test again. I want you to notice that the sample1 and sampler2 have now a hello world appended to them. Also if I will go to options log viewer, I will actually be able to See the logs at the bottom. Uh, note the number of times the thread group ran and the, where did the hello world uh, string appear. Now with this done, let's go ahead and run a JMeter test using the time function. So I'm going to go back into my sampler one. And I'm going to go ahead and create a duplicate of this. And I'm going to change the name of the duplicate to have a time function in it. Right, and I'm going to go back into sampler2 and I'm going to duplicate that as well. And I'm going to change the name to have one more time function. And I'm going to duplicate the hello world sample to one more time. And this time I'm going to append it with a different time function. All right, with all of that done, let's just go back into your results tree, clear it off, uh, save the test and run it. And I want you to notice that the samplers are now appended with the time functions that we had appended in their names. The next thing that we want to do now is configure a JMeter test using uh, the counter and thread num function. So I'm just going to delete um, some of these samplers now. And uh, to the remaining samplers, I'm going to change the name to include the counter and the thread num. Right, so that's done. Um, there's no need to change anything else in the test. The thread group uh, is still configured to run one thread for one loop as it was doing previously uh, when we had configured the test and run it. Let's go back to view results tree and I'm going to save the test and I'm going to clear this off and run the test again. Notice that the sampler name one actually has one hyphen one appended. The first number one in the sampler name is a result of the counter function 
and the second number one gives the number of thread groups in the test as a result of the thread num function. The next thing we will do now is configure the JMeter test using the UUID function. The UUID function provides a unique value every time you use it. For example, a common use case of this function occurs when you have a web application and you want to performance test the sign up phase of a scenario. In this scenario, you may create 100 new users. If you use the UU, new UUID every time that you provide a username, then you can be assured that each username will be unique for each of these requests. So let's go back into your sampler again, and this time I'm going to change the name to now have a UUID function in it. So that's done. So let's go back into your results tree, and I'm going to clear the results off, save the test, and run it again. And this time I want you to notice that the functions actually generated a 128 bit universally unique, unique identifier. And this identifier can be used to randomize logins or any other fields when testing with a high level of concurrency. The next thing we want to do now is we want to run the JMeter test using a property function. So I'm going to go back into my test plan and I'm going to add a config element into it, which is going to be a user-defined variable set. And I'm going to click um, add to add one row of user-defined variable. The name's going to be threads, and the value is going to have a function inside it, which looks like this. We now have a property function with two attributes, the name of threads and a default value of 5 added to the test. Let's go back into the thread group and configure the number of threads to uh, dollar threads. The thread group will now use the default value of 5 that you set in the property function to determine how many threads to run in the test. Now let's remove any spaces in our JMeter scripts folder name. And I'm also going to modify the script name and remove any spaces in it. So that's done. Let's also now open up a command line in uh, my local system. And I'm going to navigate into the bin directory for JMeter. And let's go ahead and run our script that we've just created. So this is what the command looks like. It has my script in there, and I'm also passing a value of three to my property by the name prop name of threads. And I'm also writing in the results to a log file. Once the script will run, it will change the default value of our property function from five to three, and also will write the results to a results log file. All right, let, that's done. Let's go back into JMeter. We will now configure a JMeter test using the property function with an instance ID. Uh, the purpose of using an instance ID is to verify which instance is giving errors or behaving strangely. Uh, for example, if you want to debug a specific engine because you're receiving errors on one engine but not on the other, you can use the instance ID function to identify the engine that's not working properly. You can do this by running a test using multiple load engines. The instance ID function identifies each specific engine or instance. For example, if you use distribution of three load engines, then their instance IDs would be one, two, and three respectively, allowing you to identify the malfunctioning engine. Let's go back to our uh, dummy sampler with the UUID, and I'm going to rename it with an instance ID property. All right, and that's how it's uh, going to look. Let's go back into my view results tree, and I'm going to go ahead and save off the test and run it now. You will notice that uh, the Sampler 1, 1 has repeated five times. 
The suckers because you're only running one engine on your local computer for five threads. This completes the demonstration. Thank you for watching. Thank you.